into the sea. I'm just a human, just a command. Wherever he goes, follow the man, just to do so with me. You want to have free speech and you won't even be thankful for those soldiers. Here I am, right directly in front of you, and you can't say anything. Huh? Once, once, yes, my wife died, and I remarried. Know your history, know what you're talking about. If that's all you've got, if that's all you've got, you don't really know much, do you? Oh, yes. Well, here I am. Say something. Does your, does your wife got a hold of your testicles? Can't you talk now? That's right. You're not part of the sheep. Then he didn't die for everybody. Yes, he did. Absolutely. He bled for everyone. Well, if I'm not one of his sheep, then he died for his sheep. He died for the world. How do you explain a simple verse like John 3, 16? How do I explain it? How do you explain it? It simply says, for God so loved the world, he died. He loved the world. Where else does the scripture in the scripture does the word world mean every human? Oh, but it's you. Where? It's you. Where? You're the elect, right? Where? Your elect's getting shorter with your kids running away. That's not very elect. I mean, stop and think about what you're doing. Your kids are running away. It's amazing how bold you are when you got a mic and you're looking at a mic. What does that You're shriveling like a little girl. You're shriveling like a little girl. Shame on you. Assuming Jesus Christ just died for you. How arrogant are you? Assuming you're God's elect. God's elect has a bit more character than having their own kids run away. And boy, the stuff they say that goes on inside of that church. It's like any other cult that I've been preaching at. It's all a bunch of lies. It's built on a bunch of lies. You come here, you're thankful for the free speech you have. Free speech is nothing without the bloodshed of our military. And for that, you can't even be thankful. You think it's a judgment of God because of all those soldiers who have died. That's not a judgment of God. We lost more people on D-Day than we have since we've been inside of the Middle East fighting. That's not a judgment of God, that's a blessing of God. Something that you'll never understand because your eyes are not open. What about you? Do you have something to say or you have nothing to say? Where's your kids at? Aren't you a little bit embarrassed? It's amazing how much boldness you have when you have the media and you want to make your name known. But when you disagree with somebody and they're in your face, you don't have anything else to say. It's amazing what a bunch of cowards you are. You wouldn't even understand persecution. There's real persecution going on with Christians being put to death for their faith. And you think because somebody says something about you, that's persecution. You guys are clueless about the God of the Bible. But what do I expect when women run the church out there? When Fred died and women run the church, you've lost your mind. Whatever mind you have left. There's nothing a homo can do. What they can he's, do. He's, he's, he's going to be tormented, that's it? No, I never said that. What so I'm you saying, believe it, a it, homosexual can repent? Absolutely. But I do believe that. Since when did that happen? I've always believed that. Oh, really? Well, you better watch that or they're going to kick you out of your church. They will. Yes, they will. The girls might. Oh, my goodness. The girls might. That's what happens when you let those women run that church. Oh, I know what I'm talking about. God has become your soul. I've known Fred Phelps longer than you'll ever know. Fred is nothing like what you guys are now. Much nothing like what you guys are now. Not everything rotates around homosexuals. Not every earthquake is because of a homosexual. Not every dilemma is because of a homosexual. You give the homos too much credit. Much like some Christians give the devil too much credit. You give homos credit for everything. 
You ought to thank God we got a man like Trump in office. Rather than a female, but then again, when you come from a church like you, I'm assuming you'd like a female. Uh, Trump's not a Christian. For a man who's not a Christian, he's doing a pretty good job. You ought to be thankful for Trump. But unlike you guys, you're a bunch of ingrates, you have soldiers who have risked their lives for your free speech, and what do you do? You spit on their grave. You guys are a bunch of ingrates, that's what you are. Shame on you. They have something to say, you might as well say it. It's amazing what a bunch of cowards you guys are. Here's somebody right here, and you can't handle it. Well, now you want to run to the cops. The same cops that you want to say, uh, uh, when, they, when one of them gets shot, that it's a judgment of God. Somebody gets in your face, and you want to look at the police for help. What a bunch of cowards you are. Absolute cowards you are. Ingrates. You got this freedom, buddy, because of people who died and bled to give you that freedom. Regardless of their faith, they actually gave you this freedom, and you reject that. What a bunch of cowards you are. Oh, oh the Phelps just can't handle that. They're so used to bully, 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 that bigger bullies show up and they cower away. They don't really do too much. You guys don't really have that fire. Oh, you're very powerful and bold when it comes to a keyboard, but you're not too powerful when it comes to really preaching truth. You guys might seem pretty bold standing in front of an infeminate sodomite, but you're not very bold right now. Shame on you, Phelps. You need to clean up your own family. Your kids are leaving you. You've got an uncle who's an atheist. You need to clean up your whole family before you try to go out and evangelize the world. Can you talk? Wife got your testicles? Can't you guys do anything? It's amazing. Ask Shirley if you're permitted to talk. Amazing. I thought they were preachers. Oh, they're not preachers. Never have been preachers. <laughs> so aren't you a little bit thankful for soldiers who died for you? Can't you at least say thank you for what you've done that actually gives me the right to stand on this sidewalk? You can't even do that? Wow, what a bunch. No wonder your kids are walking away from you. No wonder your kids have nothing to do with you. They, they haven't fallen far from the tree. A bunch of ingrates. You produced a bunch of ingrates. Shame on you. Shame on you. An uncle. Phelps' own, Fred's own brother is an atheist. That should speak volumes. Yeah, see, that's the way a woman should be. She should walk around a man. That's exactly how, what a woman should do. If you want to get into it, you I'm being called a bully. By this thing, I'm being called a bully. I'll answer you. I'll answer you. Do you think the homos are responsible for all calamities? No. Their enablers are. God is not going to let this nation say that it's okay to be gay and marry the fags and then say we give them a pass. He would have to apologize why God, to God. Why, you know who said that? Billy Graham. Billy Graham is the one who said God's going to have to apologize. Heard, you know, I heard Billy Graham in New York City talking to Katie Couric and when she said, what do you say about the fact that they're praying sex? He said, those are divisive topics. I'm not going to talk about that. He kept a very simple message. Be thankful he kept a simple message. It appears that 
appears you're a little bit jealous of Billy Graham. It appears you've got a little bit of envious. Uh, you're like Cain, who's so jealous of his brother Abel, you would kill him. The spirit of Cain lives inside of you. You ought to be thankful for Billy. He took the gospel to countries where you can't go into. God raised them for a very simple message. You expect the body of Christ to be just like you. It doesn't work that way. You know, one Really? It didn't go on to Jesus because when he went into Jerusalem, they were praising him and throwing palms there on his feet. You would have said, woe to you, Jesus. You would have said, woe to you, Jesus. Right before they But then nevertheless, they were praising him. Hosanna in the highest. Know your Bible. Know your Bible. This is America. This isn't some uh, country where we would get God. This is America where, where a president puts his hand in the Bible. I'm very thankful our president actually acknowledges Billy Graham. That's a blessing. You're just envious, that's all. You're just envious. I am. Psychologists call it penis envy. You're just spiritual envy. You just despise anyone like who's not like you, that's all. You've got the spirit of Cain, that's all. You've got the spirit of Cain in you. Psychologists call that protection. I know what you need to do is clean up your own backyard. Your kids are leaving you like cancer. They know better. Brad's own son is an atheist. Something's wrong with the clan. Something's wrong with the clan. Here is the birth for you. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is Lonnie Mathern, Trumpet of Truth Ministries, Ash Wednesday with Jimmy Miller. Praise God. God bless everyone. Uh, now what's the deal today? We're going to go uh, go find a Catholic church. What's the name of the church we're going to? Uh, Our Lady of Guadalupe. Okay. I heard yep. they call it St. Jude's Church, but I think it's, it's Our Lady of Guadalupe. Uh, it's supposed to be a shrine to some... Some so-called saint, I don't know, man, but anyway, um, you know, it's normal. They got a shrine, they pray to it, they touch her feet and all that stuff, you know, the whole nine yards. It's so, a, it's, so it's Ash Wednesday? Ash Wednesday is nothing but a bunch of bull, man, to be honest with you. It's nothing where somebody smashes ashes on your head. Um, the Catholic religion teaches that you can go out and indulge yourself for two weeks for Mardi Gras, and you can have sex with everyone, and you can drink and get drunk and puke. And you can urinate on yourself, and you can steal and lie and cheat and adultery. But as long as you go Ash Wednesday and get ashes put on your head, you're redeemed. It's it's called it, it's a it's a form of sanctification. You're sanctified. But that's a bunch of humbug right there. That's a church right there. Where? Right what? here. Right there with the Our Lady Guadalupe. Right there. The smell of urine in the morning. Disgusting. That is Mardi Gras, folks. That's New Orleans for you. Actually, it's not just during Mardi Gras. No, it's New Orleans for you. That's what New Orleans smells like. Urine. New Orleans smells like urine and puke. And stale beer. That's New Orleans.
this is Brother Jordan. He just walked up to us, and uh, we're going to pray for him right now. Yeah, okay, uh, just trying to get back to the Lord Jesus. If you want Christ in life, repeat after me, but you got to be in your heart. And that means that when you walk away from here, you won't go back to your old deeds, man. You want to go, go to Christ and His works. You want to go the way He does things, not the way you do it. You want to walk away from the alcohol, the drugs, the pornography, the cursing, lying, everything. Because if not, this prayer won't mean nothing. You want to accept Christ in life? Absolutely. Repeat after me. Father. Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I come to you a sinner. I come to you a sinner. I'm lost. I'm lost. And I don't want to go to hell. And I don't want to go to hell. And if I was to die today, if I was to die today, I'd go to hell. I'd go to hell. But now, Lord, now, Lord, I'm accept you as my Lord and Savior. I'm accept you as my Lord and Savior. I want you in my heart. I want you in my heart. I want you in my life. I want you in my life. And as John says, and as John says, if we confess our sins to God, we confess our sins to God. He's faithful and just. He's faithful and just. And cleanses. Cleanses. For many and all in our unrighteousness. For many and all unrighteousness. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I want to walk with you. And I want to walk with you. I know now I want to walk away. And then now when I walk away. And I mean this prayer in my heart. I mean this prayer in my heart. And if I die, if I die, I'm going to heaven. I'm going to heaven. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God bless you, buddy. God bless you. You got, you got, hey, now. You got the next one to eat? I got it. I got it. Can I have a Bible? Yeah, sure. Yeah, one of those packs with the McDonald's card in it? I'm looking for it right now. Hold on. Stand I got by. Something else for you, man. This is what I'm supposed to be doing, man. Straight preaching? There you go. Yeah. This here is worth, you can go to five hours, you can go to any McDonald's, get you something to eat. Joyce. Thank you, man. Get you something to eat, and it's on the Lord, okay? Jesus Perfect. loves you, man. And I love you too, man. Thank you. You know, I love you, I love you, man. That's why we're out here. And I don't want to see you go to hell, man. If you ever need to reach us, who the hell now? Oh man, they made that, huh? Need to reach us. If you find a computer, remember Trumpet of Truth. Yeah, you can stamped. write to us. We'll get it's back to you. It's stamped in here okay. inside the Bible. There's Trumpet of Truth Ministries, and you can, you can. Um, give me that Bible. He got some more in here. In, inside the Bible, with a couple of pages, it has Trumpet of Truth Ministries. If you get on the computer, look up Trumpet of Truth Ministries. You see you, you see us in the work that we do. All right. But I want yeah. to see you in heaven, man. I, I love you, buddy. You Thank I you do. again. Thank you again. All right, bro. You as well. Thank you. Thanks, bro. Oh, we're down in there. Y'all's doing a wonderful thing. God bless you guys. Thank you, man. Yeah, yeah, man. Thank you. Sure. Praise the Lord, okay? It's crying. You saw that? Amen. Amen. He was praying for him. Lord said, ah, pray this in his prayer with him, man. Lord said, pray this in his prayer with him. I said, okay, Lord, I'll do that. So, you know, amen. I mean, we didn't even get started yet. Yeah, let's see. A lot of people try to knock the sinner's prayer. I get, you know, you yeah, get that all the time. Yeah. You know, a lot of people try to knock it. You know, I hear people say, well, you got to get the Holy Ghost before you can, you can repent. Well, you know what? The Holy Ghost is what's leading you to repent. If it wouldn't be for the Holy Ghost convicting this man, he wouldn't have prayed. The Holy Ghost sent this man here to us to say a sinner's prayer with him so he could accept Christ. I mean, the man had a tear in his eye. He was, he was, it was heartfelt. So all of y'all say, well, you know, he's got to be baptized in water first. Well, maybe he'll go and get baptized in water. He'll read the Bible that we gave him. And, 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 and he'll listen to the prayer that we prayed with him and, and advice that we gave to him. So all you people who want to say, oh, you you got to accept the Holy Spirit before you repent. Let me say something, man. When a person comes to repentance, it's the Holy Spirit that's bringing them there to repent. Please, y'all knock it off, man. Y'all, y'all. Yeah, they, they, they want to pick man. apart these videos and pick on every little thing and jump yeah, see, all over you. you man. See how the whole, see how God okay. works. Oh, you see, yeah. I, 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 I use my hands, okay? <sighs> I, I, this finger, this finger. I got five fingers. If you want to see them using the satanic symbols, go ahead. I talk with my hands. You know, if, uh, maybe if I tape this finger down and I'll tape this finger down. Maybe I could tape this finger down. Tape this finger. Down. Then I'm gonna say I'm angry because I'm, I'm showing a fist. I have no satanic in me whatsoever, man. I talk with my hands. Okay, so. And we we're not even we didn't even get started yet, and the Lord then sent us someone to pray for and lead him to Jesus. Oh, it's it's a blessing. I mean, just I can, I, I, I can just go home now, man. I'm so blessed. I'm so happy. The Catholic Church don't preach born again. They really don't preach the Bible. They preach Catholicism. I've been raised Catholic. Me too. But I like Baptist more because I learn more. Uh -huh. And I'm gonna be honest. Uh -huh. That's where I'm on my way going to get my ashes. I'm being honest. You know and. I appreciate what you're saying, you know, but I know they do have false 
prophecies out here in the world. Sure. You know, so I follow my instincts. I follow my instincts, but I appreciate you preaching the word to me. But is your instinct telling you to go in there and put ash on your head? Yes, that's for, where I'm for going. For what reason? Well, I just felt like, okay, and then I want to get me some holy water. You know, and pray for, pray for uh, the bottle and get me some holy water. I believe holy water is the help. But we have to believe and step out on faith. But you know, all water is holy. It comes from God. Yeah. I believe that too. It's not that man it blessed it, but all the water is holy because yeah. it came from God. Yeah. If you didn't have no water, we'd die of thirst in a yeah. couple of days. Fat with so all water is holy. But I don't know. I just feel... I have an instant where I feel things and I sense things. And I pray a lot for the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. So God revealed things to me that I need to pay attention to. Like right now. It's people that's trying to get to me right now. But don't you know what? I'm a believe and step out on faith. And I just came from the doctor later. It was nasty. So, you know, I have, I'm, I'm, I have diabetes. The Bible, this says, diabetes. The Bible this diabetes. says no weapon is going against you shall prosper. So if they mean another to you, just let it be mean yeah. another. I'm trying to be, I'm but trying to, I'm trying honestly, to believe, honestly, ma'am, you're wasting time getting asked for the head. I can pray right now. We can pray right now. And you can, I, whatever one, we can pray. Send us pray. You accept Christ in your heart and life. You do better. And be led by the Holy Spirit and know what the truth is. But going on there, and when you're going there, what you're doing, you're really promoting, you're really signing what they're doing is wrong. What they're doing is wrong. It's not biblical. But you know what? That man coming back and he's going to do the judgment. Oh, oh, oh. But I'm not going to hold you. Okay. And you just keep preaching the word. God bless you. And God bless you all too. What's your name? My name is James. I'll keep you in my prayer. What's your man name, young man? I'm Lonnie. Lonnie. And I'll keep you in my prayer and keep Sister Brown in your prayer also. Thank in you. the blood of Jesus, in Jesus' name. Thank God bless. God bless Have you. a good day. Be safe, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Oh, well. You know, we tried. That must be Miss Guadalupe there. Yep, that must be her. Okay. Our Lady of St. Guadalupe. They have a trash can right from the garbage, right, right in front of the church, huh? Where it all stinks. Try to get a few one on one instead of preaching. Ma'am? Can I speak to you a minute? How you doing today? I'm well, how are you? Enjoying the beautiful weather, Betty, huh? Uh-huh. And I want to be. My name is James. And what we do is we talk to people. I talk about all, all faith. I was a Catholic for 30 years. I'm not a good old witness. I'm a full gospel non-denominational preacher. Mm -hmm. Can you answer? I'm, I'm trying to find out some questions from the Catholics. Mm -hmm. What is the purpose of getting ashes put on your head? Just to remind us of the Christ dying for us on the cross. That's not the Bible, right? Nowhere in the Bible we talk about getting ashes or anything. This is going on, this is going on the YouTube channel. But no, this is the, this is a man-made, uh, uh, religion, uh, man-made uh, ritual. What you want to speak? Okay. Nowhere in the Bible says, see, the Catholics teach that if you get ashes put in your head, that's to be sanctified for your sin that you did this past week. Okay. Well, I don't want to cut you off, but I'm going to Thank you. Sounds like somebody yeah. smells like somebody smoking a weed, man. Yeah, probably. When, when smell that? Yeah. Okay. 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 Here we go. We got a blue one right here. Yes, one. Got incense here. Here, here goes the lot of wire. Yeah. What you got there, Brian? It's sage. Sage, 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 like sage. Yes. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Yes, I do. Are you born again? Everyone's been born again. Oh, no, ma'am. Only those who accept Christ and walk in the ways of Christ are born again, ma'am. Sure Swing a piece of uh, smoke ain't going to make you a Christian no more than getting ashes put on your head. The Bible says you must be born again. That's right. That's right. Father, we ask in the name of Jesus to give this young lady wisdom on her, on her choice in life, Lord. Give her wisdom to 
to make a decision with this man that, and, and give this man a decision to follow you, God, and get a job. I pray that he gets a documentary papers and all that. And whatever your will is for this woman, Lord, if you want to marry this man, fine. If not, you've got something better for this lady. We know. Believe and we trust in you, God. All glory in Jesus' name. Jesus, they just want to get ashes put in the head. Man, you got a man? I can speak to you a minute. Swing with church. I'm on my way to church. It's about to Okay. Yep. See, folks, it's one on one. It doesn't do it when you say real nice and calm and all that. But, uh, there we go. It's working. It's setting off. Everybody who gets ashes put in the head, they're going to be sanctified. Only the blood of Jesus can sanctify you. Ashes put on your head cannot sanctify a person. You cannot drink beer and go to all your alcohol down to Mardi Gras. You cannot perform unnatural sex acts with a man or a woman and expect to go to heaven just because you want to get ashes put on your head. Ashes on your head is not biblical, but a man made. All it is, it's a ritual. It's like food do. It's a ritual. It's a ritual. That's all it is. Can I speak to you a minute, man? I want to talk to you about the truth, about putting ashes on your head. It is not biblical, man. It is not biblical. It's not biblical. It's not biblical to put ashes on your head, thinking that you will be sanctified from your unnatural lifestyle. You cannot get ashes put on your head and have debauchery and drink all mighty well for two weeks and have sex. You cannot even get ashes put on your head because you just spent a two-week party and sin. None of the apostles party before they fasted. Jesus Christ didn't party before he fasted. So you cannot go to a party called Mardi Gras for two weeks and do whatever you feel like doing just because you're going to go fast Wednesday. For a 40 day fast and put ashes on your head. Those ashes don't do nothing. Don't do anything. And then the people's going to get ashes put on their head. What are they going to do? They got their mind set up. They're going to go to the next Mardi Gras. So they're already thinking a year ahead in advance to go get ashes put on their head. After the day of Mardi Gras. Mardi Gras is the evil thing and putting ashes on your head is not biblical. You put ashes on your head is it's not biblical. It is a man-made Catholicism religion. It is a man-made Catholicism event. Christ Jesus did not fast before he went to before he went to a fast, Jesus Christ. He talked to Almighty God. He talked to his father. When he fasted, he didn't go and put a stuff on his face to fast. Ashes 
cancer on the head is not biblical, but man-made. Kneeling down before another man and telling him your sins is not biblical, it's man-made. The Bible says we must confess our sins to him, who's him, God, and that he's faithful and just to cleanse us from many and all unrighteousness. Man cannot forgive of your sin. Praying on beach would not do anything. Do you have any rights in there with your microphone? I have the right to be heard, sir. I'm calling the police. You're okay. on the megaphone. Okay. You're annoying them. They have a right to preach. They can hear it there, sir. They can hear you. Yes, sir. Hello. And, uh, and we have the right, sir. Okay. I am not screaming. This is not supposed to be And the Bible says that we must be born again to enter the kingdom of God. We must be born. We must be born again to see the kingdom of God. You cannot get to heaven from man. You cannot get to heaven by Allah. You cannot get to heaven by me. You can only get to heaven by Jesus Christ. So therefore, we must be born again. All the religions teach that you don't have to be born again. All you have to do is be a Baptist, a Jehovah Witness, a Catholic, anything like that. Right here, sir, on the rights. Right here, sir. We can still hear you in time. I mean, do you mind just going down there? You can come back to the next to They just started there. I'm just asking you to give us some respect. We have the right, sir. I got the right right here. In my constitutional rights to preach the gospel, in my constitutional rights to preach where I can be heard, sir. Speaking about Jesus. That's all, sir. Do they have any rights? Or just you? Do I? No, we all have. You're rights. speaking louder than he is. You're, You're screaming, sir. booming voice, sir. You're, You're disturbing screaming. them inside. Why you want to howl at me? I'm not howling at you. Why you want to disturb their mass with that loud voice of yours? Yeah, I mean, screaming like a psychopath. Probably. We're standing here very calmly oh, preaching. Sure. The first time. You're That's good. Interfering with these. I'm not interfering with nobody, sir. Yes, You're interfering sure. with them. How are we stopping You're people from, from coming and going? You're interfering with my rights. You're interfering with my rights. This is my right right here, sir. Now, before you put a bag on, you try to understand right. Sir, before you put a bag on, you try to understand what the laws are. You would understand Try to understand what the laws are, sir. I have nothing to do with you. I ain't talking to you no more. You're useless to talk to, sir. You have no brain, no sense. I'm trying to talk to you what my laws are. That's right. That's right. I'm trying to talk to you what the laws are. And you you just you just got a badge, sir. You you want to be a policeman and can. Maybe you're mad at the world, but... I, I have, have the, 40 years and then I have the right. Don't tell me I'm not a police. I have the right to be here. Well, once I have a good police, sir. Get out of here. No, sir. No, sir. We got to close the damn doors. Oh, now you're going to curse in front of the church? Did you get that on film? He cursed in front of the church. And then you want to call the police on me because I want to talk about Jesus? You all right, Pete? No, no. Chris. Look at this guy in the middle. Hey, how you doing? I'm going to the church, man. I'm going to the church, man. I have the right to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, and that's the way it is. 
You want to hold that? Yeah. I'm going to take it. I'm going to see. I got it right. Amen. Praise the Lord. I dropped that big, big cross. You ought to see my eight foot cross. It's a big one. It's a big one. This little old two and a half foot cross ain't nothing compared to my eight foot cross. You don't be pushing you. All the time. That's, the, that's not true. You're a false accuser. Yeah. Yes, you are. You're a moron. Okay. You know yeah, we're well, down okay. tape. Sure. Yeah. I'm a moron, Mr. Policeman. You're just mad because you can't be a real policeman. This is where the bus stops. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. I'm not letting you fall. Jesus Christ is the Lord and Savior. You must be born again and enter the kingdom of God. Jesus Christ said that to a man by the name of Nicodemus. Jesus did not say that you could be born again for Catholicism. For Baptism. For Islam. Jesus Christ did not be born again. Through Jehovah Witness, you must be born again and ask Christ in your life. You cannot claim to be a Christian in Christ because that is a that is a that is a hypocrite. You cannot drink from the Lord's cup, the Bible says, in the cup of devils. You must eat only from the Lord's table and not the table of devils. People want to take and call Jesus Lord, Lord, but then on that day he's going to say, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. He's going to say, Report, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I don't know you. Many people can go to church and say, Lord, Lord, but it's not in their heart. It's only on that tongue. The Bible said they confess me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. How you doing, everybody? God bless you, man. You what? Hey, see this? I'm doing the Lord's work. The man's going to get a free Bible. How's that? I'm so bad and so mean. It's all on the tape, sir. I'll tell you what. I'm going to give you this one. Let me see if I got something else better for you. This guy was going to call a priest on me because I'm out here preaching Jesus. That's well. This is for you, sir. And I hope you eat. I'm just doing what the Lord called me to do, sir. Yeah. This guy, God bless you, man. Take care of yourself, you know. See this, young man? Let me ask this. Would, would, you, like to, would you like to pray? Can I pray with you? Would you like to ask the Lord Jesus in your heart? To change your life and do better in life? some people because it's their lifestyle and not walking right with God. When you walk right with God, you're going to have storms in your life. Things are going to happen, but He will walk, walk through the storm with you. But the deal is, my friend, is if you may die today, you will leave this place called Earth and you can go to a place called Hell. You see? And you can go to a place called Hell. So if you want to, you can pray and ask Christ in your life and you can go to Heaven. But you gotta live right with God. Let me, let me, uh, let me say this. Okay, there's prayers, praying, prayers, and unanswered prayers. Yeah. No prayers that are unanswered. Well, they will be answered on our way. But sir, isn't this the taxpayer, sir? If you're disturbing the church, sir, you're disturbing the church. On your way. So uh, down the block. Down the block. Down the block. Okay. On your way. I'm just on your way. I'm just. I'm just talking. On your way. Officer. On your way. You're not. Good. You want to talk to him? You can talk to him down that way. You're out here with a loudspeaker. You're supposed to be on your way. I'm not a loudspeaker, sir. I'm on your way. You were. On your way now. Okay, so I'll be arrested. Okay. 
Go on. Go on. You go to church here? Okay, so what's going on, Jimmy? What do you think? Well, I don't know, man. I, uh, I'm going to go talk to my attorney because he, he chased me away from a public place where I was on the sidewalk. And uh, he was really irate and he was, he was belligerent. He even pushed a homeless guy when a homeless guy just went to ask him a question. So, by wisdom, I walked off because I'm not going to jail because this nutcase policeman wants to put somebody in jail because he's having a bad day or something. So, but uh, I will go talk to my attorney and uh, see if I can put a civil lawsuit on him because he changed me away for breaking, he's for, for breaking law, which I haven't broken. I was standing right there on taxpayers' property. I was on a sidewalk. And uh, I tried to explain it to him, and I don't want to listen to it. I tried to explain to him I was on the sidewalk, and it's tax credit, and he was just getting irate. And I seen his face, I've been dealing with police for a long time, so wisdom, the Holy Spirit said, just walk on, and I'm going to go see me an attorney. Folks, need to repent, get to know the Jesus Christ of the Bible. I ashes aren't going to cut you any mustard on Judgment Day. God doesn't care about those ashes on your forehead, He cares about your heart. What is your heart's condition before Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ said, there's nothing hidden that shall not be revealed or covered that shall not be made known. Paul said in Romans chapter 2 that God will judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ. God is going to judge your secrets, not hiding anything with those ashes. Jesus Christ said when you fast to wash your face and anoint your head with oil. So it doesn't appear to me that you're fasting. You're going to go home and uh, wear those ashes at your house. You're going to Go home and uh, go to your job with ashes on your forehead so everybody can see how religious you are. I'd like to talk today about the issue of working with police. Oftentimes people see videos that I have or pictures when we travel in other cities and uh, they see a police around us and they say we preach in that same city uh, brother Reuben uh, we don't need the police protection like you do. Well there might be a reason for that. Maybe when you go in that city you don't rebuke the sin like we do. Maybe you have more in common with the uh, sinner than you do uh, rebuking sin. But when you go inside of a city and cause no small stir, you will get police reaction. And so uh, Bible college uh, rarely will teach, if ever, uh, what to do and how to work with police. Anytime we find out a minister is arrested, it's usually because he molested somebody, uh, stole money from church, or did something uh, worthy of arrest. However, when street preachers get arrested, uh, we usually get told, that, well, you deserved it. Well, you provoked them. Uh, do understand, our Bible, our holy book, is filled with men and women of God who were persecuted. A lot of men of God in the Bible were jailed, went to court. Jesus, before the court, never said a word. The Apostle Paul, before the court, constantly, constantly, uh, talked about uh, his citizenship. And so that's something you need to consider uh, when you do go to court. Granted, if you're even worthy to go to court, if you're even making that big of a stir in cities. And so uh, I like to say and give a little rundown what to do when you meet a police officer in the street. Uh, make it very clear. Usually when a police walks up, the first thing he asks, who's in charge? Uh, I know young Christians that say Jesus is in charge. Well, that really starts the entire conversation rocky. I know officers, what they would like to do is find out who they're addressing. 
So they'll ask you, can I see some ID, please? And, uh, you know, it's very common within the, uh, uh, you know, Christian world that, uh, you know, hey, you don't need to show ID. I say show the police officer the ID so he can put that aside and know who he's addressing with. It's not a conspiracy. It's not the government's after you. It's just he wants to know who he's talking to. Body language means a lot. That officer went to the academy and they're taught body language. I usually have my sunglasses off, usually have my sunglasses raised so they can look me in the eye so I can, uh, they can see if I'm lying or not. If I'm, uh, if I'm uh, skipping words, nervous, twitching. Uh, these are things that police are looking for. If you're confident, if you're looking them in the eye, they have nothing to worry about. You're giving them the ID. You have no warrants. You shouldn't be out there if you did. And so my point is, just speed up the process. It's been very common when a guy gets arrested how he starts yelling at the police, I'm going to sue you. I pay your badge. Or whatever it is that you say when you scream at a police officer. We're not protesters. Do understand that. We're not protesters. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's an honor to be, a, to be arrested for the gospel. The Bible makes it very clear. Uh, you don't start screaming at a police officer. You don't fall to the ground so he has to drag you away. That's a protester, okay? That's not a street preacher. How a street preacher gets arrested is when he's told to put his hands behind his back and he submits. Before I do, I'll stick my Bible in my mouth and walk away. That's my crime for using this book. We have, we have attorneys, we have courts, and we'll fight it in that court system. But do understand, you're going to be falsely charged. You're going to be slandered. Your name's going to be uh, destroyed. Do understand that's the concept of getting arrested. Nevertheless, you are not going to a prison. If anything, you'll be taken to the precinct or the city jail, uh, maybe released on bond, and you come back for a court date. It's not the end of the world. I, when I go into a city, will meet with the chief of police. We'll meet with lieutenants. We'll meet with big shots of cities that I don't even live in. That's the kind of steal. That's what happens when I go into a city because I know there'll be issues. Police will be called and uh, accusations will be made on what we do. And so uh, I let them know in advance that we're coming in. Expect this to happen. You can't go out and reprove sin without the police being called. That's the nature of the beast. When the officer arrests you, don't start screaming or hollering. It's normal. The Bible says this is going to happen. Many scholars can write books about the Bible, but don't know what it's like to sit in a jail cell. Many of you think you know God and you're the modern-day Apostle Paul or you're the modern-day John the Baptist. I've never claimed to be any of those. But you've never spent a day inside of a cell for the faith. You have no idea what that's like. Because not only does most likely the media, if it was an event, will write something bad about you, but people on Facebook or YouTube will slander your name. I do understand that's not what it's about. Uh, to be sitting in the cell for your faith, most of you will never taste what that's like. I've been arrested more times than I can ever remember. Uh, and who cares? Uh, I've got attorneys to go ahead and fight that when the time comes. Out of all the times I've been arrested, never been charged, usually the cases get dropped out before it even goes before a court and all of that system. Because it's not really an issue. They know they lied. They know things are wrong. I don't sue cities for money. Do understand that. I get accused of that. If we go to court, I don't get the nickel. I don't get money out of that thing. Uh, my attorney, however, he's going to get paid and paid so properly. The only thing I'm concerned about is that sidewalk that we have soldiers who fought and died and bled for. That's our American right to do so. We're not Canada. We're not Mexico. We're not France. We're not Europe. This is America. And uh, that sidewalk was paid for a price, and I tend to, uh, to use that sidewalk. I tend to go to jail if I need to on that sidewalk. 
And so uh, do understand, you're going to be hated for the gospel's sake. But uh, when you get arrested, do what the officer says. Uh, I've been told by officers, I can write books on what they've done to me. I should be a rebel against police, but I do work with them. They've slammed my head against the hot hood of a car door or the hood, the front, uh, the top of the car, uh, squad car. It's burning. My cheeks are burning. They put me in the back seat, told me to watch my head, hit my head on the door. They put cuffs on me so tight it almost slit my wrists. But nevertheless, that's part of the program. I'm not screaming and crying. Uh, it'll all be worked out. As a matter of fact, I actually thank God. I was, uh, I was able to taste of the Bible. And so I urge that for you too. When you go out, expect police to be called if you're going to make that big of an issue on the streets as you claim to. I do understand that's the concept. we got men and women of God who have uh, been persecuted and jailed for their faith. And you're just, you're just experiencing that. Even in America, the free speech that we have can be limited. And so uh, there is no law against outdoor preaching. But uh, they can, you can be arrested for loitering. You can be arrested for public nuisance. You can be arrested for riotous words, uh, provoking people, uh, you know, uh, trespassing. I've been arrested for all those. I've been arrested for um, disturbing the peace twice during Mardi Gras on Fat Tuesday. Uh, figure that out. Uh, there's cities that after we go into, they make laws against what we do. And we fight those laws. We go to court and we overturn those laws. And so we're very happy to live in this country, to have freedoms that we do. And I'm, all I'm just simply saying is don't abuse those freedoms. Thank God we live in this country. And that officer is not the evil centurion, even if he arrests you. Uh, be polite to the guy. Uh, thank him. Uh, even in the back seat, I've been arrested, talking to the officer in charge, and hey, he's just doing what he's told. That's all. He's just doing what he's told. When we get out there, uh, don't start popping an attitude with the cop. Don't start uh, arguing with the police officer. Do understand, uh, he's going to probably arrest you before stopping an event down or hauling away some sinner. You don't run to the police officer, he just hit me. He just threw beer on me. He just spit on me. You need to do your job. I pretty much just take it. I pretty much just shred it and walk away. Uh, they're not there to arrest them. Chances are it's going to be slim that a heathen is going to get arrested for doing something to you. You better know that going in. So don't start whining to the police officer. It's been foretold we're going to be hated. We're going to be beaten. We're going to be spit. You know, whatever it is, persecution you think uh, is told, uh, you might experience. And so uh, if something happens, don't run like a little girl to the police demanding they get arrested. Because chances are that officer's not going to do anything. Uh, there are times when you should press charges. And then there are times where I just pretty much tell the officer, put a little fear of God in him and let him go. It depends on the scenario. There are times I will actually say I will pursue a charge. At one time in Ohio, I had a police officer that I was talking to witness a homosexual spit on me. The officer said, whether you want to press charges or not, I am. I'm going to arrest him. I saw a crime in progress. And it's a felony in Ohio to spit on somebody. And so, uh, you know, it's not up to me all the time. Uh, sometimes it's good to uh, have somebody jailed. I don't have a problem with that. If God tells you to have a sinner arrested, I don't have a problem with that. I understand that. Usually your critic may not, but he's never been in the same position that you and I have. Uh, you know, it's good to love your neighbor. And with this guy in jail, uh, you're loving your neighbor because the next street preacher that comes in, he's not going to get away with such. But do understand, uh, there's a difference between law and grace. And we are ministers of grace they are there to uphold man's law. So if you get arrested, do understand it's just the officer's job. He's not the evil centurion taking you to the cross. Just give him the ID, uh, uh, answer his questions, uh, don't flinch. And uh, do understand, you have the right to be on that sidewalk. 
you have what's called a heckler's veto. Even if you say offensive words, the heckler's veto will cover you. If he's not familiar, he can Google it and find out what to do. Usually when I'm dealing with police for the first time, uh, they're on their cell phone, not their radio. Because a radio can be summons, and every conversation that's on that radio can be given and used in court. A phone call from their personal cell phone, well, you know, there's not much we can do. We can't record that because it's not recorded. So um, the point is they can say a lot more on that cell phone than they can on the radio. And if they're trying to find a reason to get rid of you and they can't, they're going to make something up. It's not the end of the world. Like I said, most men of God in the Bible were arrested on false charges, and uh, it's not going to be anything new. Just because you got a citation, just because you spent one day in jail, doesn't mean your name is in Fox's Book of Martyrs. It's expected. We have many verses where soldiers were brought into the city where the Apostle Paul preached. That's how much of a stir that man made. And so do understand, quite frankly, I believe most police officers like what we say. They just can't say it because of the badge that's on us and on them. And so uh, I do appreciate what they do. Uh, out of all the arrests that I've done, I don't have a chip on my shoulder. I still work with them and politely call them sir and thank you. So I hope this helps. And I hope these pictures uh, speak volumes uh, to what I say because it's evidence that we do work with police. God bless you, and uh, maybe I'll be a cellmate for Jesus.